Intertextuality is a commonly used postmodern technique. Intertextuality can be loosely defined as an author using another work to create meaning within their own work. I chose to examine two works by the author Vladimir Nabokov, those being Pale Fire, as well as his very famous or infamous novel, Lolita. Nabokov was trained as an artist as a child, so throughout his novels he loves to include many famous works of art. In Lolita, he, sp he specifically mentions a Reynolds, a Botticelli, a Van Gogh, as well as a Whistler. The character Lolita is a young girl throughout most of the novel. And the character H.H. mentions these four works of art in reference to her. Through these four portraits, we can see the progression or the development of a woman, starting with childhood, of course. Though in the Lita's case, ironically named the Ages of Innocence. Then, the birth of Venus, the goddess of love, a sexually mature, fertile woman. Van Gogh shows us the middle-aged woman, experienced, settled into life, confident. And then finally, of old age, the days spent thinking of the past, of contemplating the life already lived. Pale Fire is a novel which is not of a typical novel. It is actually a poem with commentary made by a friend of the fictional author of the poem. Now, throughout the poem and throughout the commentary, there are many uses of intertextuality, but sticking with the theme of art, one specific reference in the novel pops out. In the poem, a fictional artist is compared to another fictional artist, Fra Pandolf a creation of the English poet Robert Browning in his famous poem, My Last Duchess. The whole point of this in the novel is to compare the portrait of the character's dead daughter to the portrait of the last duchess. While neither such portrait actually exists, the last duchess is thought to be this real woman, well, not this woman, but the woman this portrait is painted of, a Medici. So on the one hand, we have real people with inspiration for artwork which is then used to enhance the image of a fictional character's in our mind's eye. And on the other hand, we have the opposite of that, using a fictional character and finding a real person to play her, as we, see, as we have here in Stanley Kubrick's movie adaptation of Lolita. So in a way, these images all feed into who Lolita is. All of these, in a way, affected how Kubrick felt when selecting the actress to play Lolita in his movie. And of course, because of the popularity of Lolita, the term Lolita itself has become popular among many other authors. Used in reference to a seductress, a young seductress, of course, or perhaps a girl who is a bit too mature for her age. So we have these authors employing the technique of intertextuality themselves in their own works, referencing Lolita, the novel by Nabokov, which which is only continuing the cycle, taking all of this, the whole meaning behind the novel, and containing it in one small word with their own work, Lolita. That's intertextuality at its best.